Welcome to today's SeafoodNews.com video, sponsored by the Alaska Seafood Marketing Institute. Good morning. Uh, today is a Tuesday, April 23rd. It's the first day of the European Seafood Show in Brussels. Uh, despite any of the economic problems in Europe, uh, the Seafood Show is a big draw and it appears to have the uh, normal numbers of traffic. Uh, as one uh, West Coast uh, exporter said to me when I saw him on the subway this morning, He's coming to the show, his principal aim is just to meet a few new customers. Uh, yesterday there was a range of meetings and a couple of them touched on uh, what I think is a very important uh, phenomenon in the seafood industry. Uh, Fish Pool in Norway held a meeting on uh, salmon prices yesterday and there was a lot of uh, consensus there that uh, salmon prices are, are going to remain very strong. Uh, there's uh, production problems in Norway which have been uh, brought about by cold water uh, and also the situation in Chile uh, is manageable but uh, very stressful. Uh, the fact that uh, the fish have so many lice on them makes them more uh, subject to other diseases and infections. A second meeting held yesterday was the fourth uh, biannual uh, uh, European Tuna Conference uh, sponsored by A Tuna uh, from the Netherlands. Uh, this conference was sold out uh, and we write about it in our news today but the uh, most striking conclusion was that tuna high, the high tuna prices that we're seeing uh, including uh, record price levels in Bangkok in the last few weeks uh, for frozen uh, skipjack uh, are likely here to stay and they're here to stay because of some structural changes in the tuna industry as there's been increasing demand around the world uh, for tuna products. Uh, at the same time, there's been a reduction in fishing effort of 7 to 10 percent brought about as more tuna fisheries uh, take the measures required uh, to ensure long-term sustainability. So we have a classic case in tuna where uh, increased uh, customer expectations for sustainability along with increased demand for the product and a, a reduction in uh, some of the fishing effort is leading to a uh, what's uh, expected to be a long-term uh, high price plateau. Uh, similar to salmon, the issue in tuna is, is pricing. But it's important to remember, even though you see major commodities with a uh, very high level of prices, uh, like salmon, uh, shrimp, and tuna, in this case, the sellers basically feel the buyers just have to accept and absorb the fact uh, that this is where the market is and if they need the product they're going to have to pay. Uh, there's also a whole suite of seafood items that are in the opposite uh, situation uh, including obviously cod because of the uh, world supplies but other ground fish like uh, pollock as well. Uh, also some of the shellfish like um, uh, the crab fisheries have basically been under uh, some price pressure uh, as the uh, consumption mix changes and as the Japanese uh, confront the higher yen. So all in all it looks to be a very interesting show. We'll report again tomorrow uh, but uh, the message uh, for buyers who need to, to, to take on commitments to the higher price species is that's just where the market is. Uh, in Brussels, Belgium, this is John Sackton. Today's SeafoodNews.com video was brought to you by the Alaska Seafood Marketing Institute. Alaska has been protecting wild and sustainable seafood for generations and adheres to the most recognized and internationally accepted set of guidelines written by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. For recipes and additional information, visit WildAlaskaFlavor.com.